Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is part five of the video series uh, Street Evangelism. Uh, let's talk next about uh, the demeanor and the attitude that a person should have uh, during street evangelism. Um, we've been talking about the uh, kind of the atmosphere uh, that we've, we've seen so many people create uh, with the signs and the shirts and the, the attitude, it's just, it, it seems to me like a very kind of hostile atmosphere. Um, a riot. And I know that if we compare our experience in the past to, to what we do now, uh, the, the total atmosphere uh, around us, let's say within a, let's say a uh, 30 yard radius of us, uh, before, it was a kind of a real hostile, confrontational atmosphere that was created. Uh, now, it's a very friendly, relaxed atmosphere. Now, let me kind of illustrate well, you know, the effect this kind of atmosphere can have on someone. Let's say that you're walking uh, down a street, and you walk right past this house that's fenced, and a, a, a really large uh, barking, Snarling dog jumps up and sticks his head on the fence, starts, you know, barking and growling and snarling at you, and uh, and he's just really, really aggressive. Uh, how will you feel, and what do you want to do? I want some earplugs. Um, I want to get away from the front of that the fence area there as quick as I can. I don't want to hang around and listen to this dog snarl at me and bark at me. Um, I want to get away from that. It, it's there's no peace. You don't want to that hang, area. You just don't want to don't want to hang around there and and relax by that uh, by that vicious dog. No, no. You want to get away from it quickly and and far, right? Absolutely. Well, that's the kind of atmosphere that I've seen so many street preachers uh, create around them. Um, it's it's a ho hostile, confrontational atmosphere, and if if they think that people are going to actually listen to them and they're going to really make a difference, uh, drawing people to Christ like that, they're wrong. Uh, see, we've, we've done this both ways now. We, we have experience to see the contrast and, we, and also see the difference in results. Uh, so, um, we just, if you really want people to listen to you, you really want them to hear the good news, if you really want people to get saved, you've got to have an atmosphere of friendliness. Uh, uh, where the people feel comfortable entering it, and they might even want to stop and listen for a while, and and they might even actually seriously consider what you're saying, That's right. and they might even want to actually have a conversation That's with right. you. A conversation, not a screaming match, yeah, but an it, actual conversation. It, I mean, if you're disturbing the peace, so to speak, or in disorderly, and being hostile and, and, and violent in, in the way you're presenting um, the message, then uh, rightly so, when they call the cops on you and the cops show up, um, you you deserved it. I I it's suspect not you're being persecuted. Again, I, I can't look into someone's heart and I can't read their mind. But as I've uh, observed these street preachers over the last five years now, um, I really suspect that there are real ulterior motives going on there. I think some of them. The entire experience is, is all based on me, me, me. It's for their own ego. Uh, and uh, uh, some of the others, they are actually just bullies. And this gives them a legal ex way that they can actually go out there and bully people, call them names, uh, be rude to people, and point the finger and condemn and judge people. And, and, and they get to do it because we have a constitution. And you know, freedom of speech, freedom of religious expression. So they have that right. So they go out, and they, it's really inside them is the nature of being just a bully. And this is the way they they exercise and so, it. And so when the cops show up because they're totally out of line, oh, they're being persecuted. No, that's not the case. They're the ones that bring it on themselves. Uh, they're the ones that should be arrested yeah. for what they're doing. Now I. Um, I, I don't. In some cases, they should be arrested, and they are arrested. If they're breaking the law. I, I, I don't want to take away their right to to um, uh, say what they want, even in the most vile way, uh, uh, even if they wanted to hate people. I think we have the right, as as citizens of this country, we have the right to uh, have those viewpoints and express them. And I don't want anybody's rights taken away. Uh, but if they think that they're really serving Christ. 
if they think that they are really an ambassador for Christ with that kind of an attitude and, and conduct, uh, they are really, really wrong. And I, I know a young man that I worked with in years past, and uh, once I, was, I had a conversation with him, and I referred to him as an evangelist. And he quickly corrected me. He says, I'm not an evangelist. I said, you're not? Well, what are you? He said, I'm a rebuker. Um, and he's not the only one. Many of these people, they consider it their job to go out and rebuke people and just point the finger and condemn. And they're not really doing anything to try to help them uh, get saved. They just get pleasure out of bullying and rebuking people. Maybe it's a power trip. It's not of God. They're pushing people further away from Christ. And uh, it's not exactly the same kind of a problem, but here's something else that's kind of related. is Sometimes people use gimmicks to try to draw a crowd. Um, some people do magic tricks to get people's attention. Or they talk about a different subject uh, and to draw people in and then kind of trick them into finally getting them to talk about the Bible. Yeah, I mean, that's I've, been, I've been there and I'm guilty of that myself in the past and it, it is deceitful when you look at it, um, it it's, it's uh, not the way um, to approach sharing the gospel the gospel doesn't need these things um, um, to be able to share it with somebody yeah, I'm not ashamed of the gospel and I don't feel like I need to do any kind of magic tricks or do any kind of um, um, uh, ploy to get people's attention and to draw a crowd, I simply want to start talking about who Jesus is, what He did for us, why we need Him, and that is enough. That is enough to, to uh, draw people's crowd. And they, they listen for the right reason then. The message doesn't need the gimmicks. You don't find the gimmicks in the Scripture. You don't find them using gimmicks in the Scripture um, to get people uh, to hear the message. Okay, so we've, we've discussed some of the things that uh, they should not do as far as their attitude and, and demeanor. And, but uh, in the next video, let's, uh, let's uh, give instruction on uh, the proper attitude and demeanor, okay?